One question people ask us a lot is, why has it taken so much longer than we expected? And yeah, there's no doubt it has taken longer than we expected. Well, there are a number of answers to that. The first is simple. Everything takes longer than you expect. I mean, when you take a car to a garage and the mechanic says, well, I'll get it back to you at three o'clock. Three o'clock comes and he says, well, it's taking longer than I thought. I'll get it back to you at six or tomorrow morning. Well, you don't turn around and fire the mechanic. You know that time estimates are going to be rough. And the mechanic is doing something that he's done before. We're doing research, which means by definition, we're doing things we haven't done before. So that's the first part of the answer is, Everything takes longer. To be more specific, you look at uh, things like putting the machine together. Many tasks that we thought would be trivial turn out when we try them to be more complicated than we thought. So the, cons the reconstruction of the device when we were putting the beryllium electrodes in took much longer than we thought, three times as long. But did we run into any specific problems? No, things just took longer. Second big reason is we did think we would get the funding we needed, and we haven't. So that means we have less people than we need. Right now, there's only one person, my colleague Syed Hassan, who is full-time in our laboratory. That's far too little for a project of this nature. Now, I do a lot of work in the lab, but it's not my only responsibility. In addition to helping with the experimental work, I have to analyze the data, write papers, plan the next steps, and of course, I have to devote quite a bit of time to fundraising. Uh, both Ivy and Jose help out very greatly in the lab, but in neither case is that their primary responsibility. So because we have so few people in the lab, that means we have to do task A, then task B, then task C. The much more efficient way of doing it is to have Person A do task A, person B do task B, and person C do task C, and get them done simultaneously. Because in many cases, these are not sequential tasks. These are tasks that could be worked on together. And that's not only in terms of tasks that we have for a given part of the project. That's in part of the direction of the project itself. With the resources we have, there was no responsible way to go forward except to first test the tungsten electrodes and then go on and test the beryllium electrodes. And it took us a lot of time to even raise the money to buy the material and the machining for the beryllium electrodes. If we had had sufficient money, the crash program and correct approach would have been to say, all right, Team A works on the machine with tungsten electrodes, and Team B works on the machine with beryllium electrodes. And let's see which is better. Can we get away with working with, with tungsten? Or do we need the more expensive material of beryllium? So all of these things are ways in which the lack of finances slow down the program. And conversely, if we had considerably more finances, certainly we need money to hire at least one more person full-time in the lab. And ideally, we need the money, especially in the development stage, to have a crash program in which we're trying different things at the same time. So, 
If we look at the other side of the question, are these delays of concern to people who are investing in the company? Well, of course they're of concern in the sense that it takes a longer time to get to the point where the company is producing a, pro uh, a, a product and a profit. But the key question is, do these delays indicate a decrease in the chance that we will succeed in the end? And I would argue, no, they don't. We haven't had delays because we've encountered problems that jeopardize our conception of where we need to go. So that's the key question. And the answer is, no, there's been no evidence that these delays have jeopardized our chances of success. The other side of the question is, are we proceeding faster than other competitors in the field? And you have to say the answer to that is clearly yes. If we measure progress in terms of person years into the project, which is a useful way of measuring pro uh, progress, and is really the equivalent of progress before be, uh, per dollars invested, then clearly we're progressing far faster than anyone else in the field. Even if you take simply the progress per year, again, we have the best results by far, the most fusion per unit uh, energy input by a factor of a thousand compared with any other private fusion company. So are we going slower than we expected? Yes, that's true. But are we going faster than anyone else? Yes, that's also true. So that's the answer to the question that a lot of people are asking.